This is Andy Tube, and in this video, uh, we're going to be working on the presser bar system of this uh, Singer Model 221 Featherweight. And I'll be uh, removing the presser bar system parts. I think I'll clean them, and then I'll put them back in, and then we'll uh, set the height of the presser bar above the needle plate using the factory recommended settings. And uh, I just wanted to mention before we start, if, if for anybody who's kind of following this series of videos, um, about every 12 hours I've been putting a drop of oil in all the oil ports shown in the instruction manual on uh, this machine that I call Lala. And I have a pretty good movement now. I'm uh, everything kind of started freeing up. Um, I have a little uh, bit of hesitation because down here, uh, when you look down here, you're able to see onto the back of the hook side, and I can see um, thread scraps of thread wrapped around in there. And uh, that can get so bad that it'll jam the machine, it won't even run. But I just put some oil on there, and it's, it's slippery enough that it's running now. I can run it with the, with the motor and the funny little wiring and foot controller that came with my machine. There we go. So not the speediest... Uh, <laughs> machine but compared to how it would barely uh, budge before it was almost frozen so anyway that that worked well I, I didn't have to use any penetrating oil or uh, kerosene or alcohol or anything just just drop some plain old uh, all, uh, Singer all-purpose machine oil in there and that was enough over time you know I wasn't in any hurry so uh, let's get started here we're going to take off the face plate to expose the presser bar uh, area here Whoop, this beautiful face plate good, good thing it's uh, solid metal with chrome or that probably would have put a nice scratch on it hmm. And then uh, you can you can see here the uh, see I need to get some more light. You can see the the presser bar and the lifter lever, and uh, you can see the pressure control thumb knob up here. Get this other light on the other side. Sorry, it's afternoon here and light comes through that curtain behind the machine and it, I didn't realize until I looked down at the camera screen, it's really not that bright. So, this is a pretty typical setup for Singer. That has a pressure knob, lifter lever, and it's got a guide bracket. Um, here that that uh, goes into a slot on the side of the machine so the guide bracket slides up and down as you lift the lever and then that has this uh, clamping screw to hold the actual presser bar in at the height that you set you know so We'll just start uh, dismantling it here. We're going to unscrew Lefty Lucy uh, this um, pressure regulating thumb screw. Again, very, very common to Singer style of machines. A little hollow in there so that this uh, push rod or extension rod can, can go in there. And then we're going to bring that right out the top. Everything, uh, you know, the, the presser bar itself and this is going to come out the top as we dismantle. And this is also very common. It's a, like a steel pin. has a little 
uh, kind of nipple area here that this spring clips onto. And uh, if that spring doesn't want to come out, it can get oil down in there and get stuck and dried. So you would want to drop something in there, alcohol or other oil, or uh, something like crud cutter cleaner and degreaser that I like to use. Uh, drop it to a kerosene, kerosene to soften that up and then you can uh, get it out. And rarely you'll find these springs are broken and they can get jammed in there too. But uh, if you can get it out, go ahead and, and get it out of there at this point. And then um, we're going to want to take off the... Yeah, yeah see no spring. <laughs> So we want to take off the uh, presser foot now and the thumb screw. Okay, just remove those. And then this uh, model has a thread cutter here. It's kind of like a spring type heavy steel that's bent and curved and it just squeezes on to the presser bar and it has a sharp edge at the top sometimes the bottom too this one is only at the top and it's used as a thread cutter and since this presser bar is going to be coming out the top we have to get that off and uh, I don't I don't uh, use this style very often like there was one on a, the Singer 99K that I did cute you happen to see that series of videos and uh, my wife just had me leave it off she didn't want that on there so this this is uh, can be kind of stuck on there also and uh, with dried oil that's that's the problem with taking out these old uh, bars from these from these older machines is that you know they get oil 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 has dripped down here and it gets in between the parts and then it gets dry and then it sits in a storage someplace for a couple decades and it can be very sticky to get off often after you take all the parts apart getting the needle bar or the presser bar up out of the clamp <laughs> it can be the hardest part of this it can just be like glued in there so this I just pushed off if you've never seen one of these that's what I meant about it's it's a steel like rolled and formed into a uh, it's got an open open end right there that kind of flexes out a little bit and it's just made that uh, you know you you drag your thread over it to cut your thread when you want to take your work out from under the machine okay then we we're going to have a clamping screw here that's in the guide and uh, if this is okay not bad if this is stuck in there then uh, again you, you can use alcohol you can use I use uh, WD but I, I haven't used any of that on this machine yet because there's something in the back of my mind I, I know using certain things on the machine can turn the gold decals silver to, the WD-40 so uh, I'm not going to use it yet until I test it but that came out if yours doesn't um, normally I would put some WD-40 or alcohol up around the top of that clamp and inside this the screw once you can get the screw out oh, this is moving Let's see how it can it can be uh, stuck in there so soaking it uh, with stuff like that to soften up that old varnished oil and um, 
using a, a heat source. Now I just have a $20 hair dryer that I use. It gets plenty hot on high and I'll run it on low or high and you know three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes heat up these old parts like this and some people have told me they've used a heat gun and, uh, and, and if you feel you can do that safely then do that and that can help a lot to soften these things up. If, if your presser bar won't push right up through this guide and there's a little built-in bushing here if it won't move up then I have taken a pair of pliers and you can you can cover this with a rag or something if you want and where you would clamp on the presser foot you just get a grip on that and and you just twist it it's just kind of twist it like this and that can help break the the seal so that then you can start moving it up and down okay so if it if it's and and I get many emails every year about this that I, I it's I won't budge you know are you sure it comes out <laughs> but it will you just have to be patient sometimes or use heat or some some liquid to soften it and even when you start moving it down here later on you know if it was stored say with the needle bar up like this okay down in the uh, bushing down here you can have a big glob of oil that's settled there and dried and you get a little ridge line of that hard oil at the bottom of the bearing right on the presser bar and when you go to slide it up through the bushing and through this clamp and this the tolerances are real close and it'll go like right up to there and boop stop 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 so you can you can put you know uh, your mm, kerosene or alcohol or your cleaner on on a little rag or something and and wipe it around on the bar down here if it's hesitating to go up okay but uh, and it's often common that you'll get it up let me do it right to about See this still, this is kind of hesitating on me. There we go. You'll get it up like right about there. And it won't go up anymore. <laughs> and you can't, it's very hard to get like a grip in here to, to try and push it up. And you, and you don't have uh, anything left at the bottom. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh no, it's stuck, <laughs> you know. So that is why if it, hesitates and feels bad uh, bring it down and try and clean off as much of that stuff as you can before you go up okay and then uh, let's see if we can get that down and then eventually you want it to come up and out the top just like that okay so it's it's whoops it's it came out of the guide bracket and it's going to come through this little bushing area and then it's going to come right out the hole in the top. I'll give you a close look at it here. So you can see some of the markings of the built up varnished oil on there. See the brownish look and everything sometimes when you look at it you think wow that's, there's it's rusty but and in some cases it might be rust I don't see a lot of rust here in Arizona but um, it's usually just this built up dried up oil we call varnished oil okay so look we got that out now right it's hollow down in there for that for that uh, spring and bar to go and sit down into see and then when when you lift the bar up it pushes on that spring and that's that pressure downward is what 
pushes the foot down on the on your fabric okay now this little guide kind of an L-shaped thing you can get it up move it up into the slot over here see if I can see it's sticking out the side here now and then you can push it into the nose and uh, kind of manipulate it a little bit and get the L out of the slot and then I'll just get it here and we'll bring it out for you and you can see how stained and dark it is with uh, with oil and on the inside so we're going to clean that too right okay so I think technically those are all the parts um, of the of the bar and the spring and everything now you have this pressure bar lifting lever here okay and on many machines at this point you could go in and take out the the hinge screw and pull this out this one appears to be set into the machine with just a pin just a solid metal pin and that pin one end is behind this tension pin releasing lever for the tension unit and then back here where did I see that back back here right about here down here there's a hole and I think that's where they put the pin in is is from here to the front so I think you could knock the pin out the back and pull this out now I wouldn't do that when it's held in by a pin unless this was defective there is a little uh, button I guess we'll call it that sticks out of the front here and that is what hits this lifting lever and rocks it over to push on the tension releasing pin of the tension unit I have seen uh, machines where that button has worn flat and even though you lift the lever up all the way it won't move the releasing lever far enough to take tension off of the disc in the tension unit so it's had to be replaced so I'm not going to take that out but I, what I am going to do is maybe cheat a little bit and I'm going to take out this tension pin releasing lever you know it's like is that part of the tension unit yeah but is it part of the presser bar system mm, kind of because it's activated and the screw for it is usually hidden way inside there and you have to take out like the needle bar and everything to get it out so since I don't remember seeing one right in the front like this so since it is whoop, I'm just going to uh, take this out and I'll go ahead and clean it but we'll, we'll get a look at it and for today it'll be part of the pressure bar system so there's a big flathead uh, screw here that holds that and it it is a hinge screw it has a very thin hinge area up there without thread because the lever itself is very thin you know so it's got a smooth spot to to kind of hinge on and then this should just come right out yeah so it's kind of a convoluted looking piece here but this is where that button hits back here and uh, you see maybe you can see that maybe you can see that button now better let me get my light there yeah 
see that little button on the lever that lifting lever okay and that's that button is what rides here and of course it hinges so it it goes like this this part of the releasing lever is just going to push on a, the pin tension pin that sticks out of the back of the tension unit right back there that's what it's going to rock against so it pushes that to release tension when I do the tension unit I'll show you this again you know and you may a lot of you may know what I'm talking about and it has a little um, I forget exactly what the, the spring is like the tension pin releasing lever spring but it's made to push away when, when the lever lifting lever goes down that little push off spring kind of a, a funnel shape there is to prevent you know it pushes away from the pin to prevent it hitting the pin because when you lower the lever you want tension back on your tension unit to put tension on your needle thread so that's what this little screw our screw this little spring is for right there so I, I love it that you can take this off so easily and you can see how grungy it is you know so we're gonna we're gonna want to clean it right <laughs> You want to clean all of these parts. So, I think I'm going to try and clean this in place. See, can you see all the black muck on it there? It's it's pretty pretty dirty. That's why I usually take it out and clean it. Here's that uh, roll pin I'm talking about that holds it in. And I think you could take a, the right size roll punch here and tap that pin out uh, the back and take this off I'm not like I said I'm not going to do it uh, it's just dirty the lever and if I mess up that pin it might be hard to find one so um, I'm not going to do that but that's what I believe you'd have to do yeah okay so I'm going to uh, set up here then to clean these parts. I'm just going to clean them right here on the on the bench so that you could see it. So let me get set up and we'll give it a try to get them soaking and then try and clean this up. Okay, I'm set up here. This is the cleaner that I use to clean uh, parts, especially, and even painted machines. I don't don't use this on a featherweight I, at this point. I don't know how bad that is. I have a feeling it's not good for this type of finish, so don't let it come near it. Uh, maybe I can do some testing on it later. But I'll often uh, use this, usually about a 20% solution, which is what I put in my spray bottle here. And a lot of times I'll just take these parts to a sink and spray them and, uh, you know, use a toothbrush or a sponge or a scrubby uh, like that and get the gunk off and then dry them. Uh, and that's it. And I usually dismantle a whole machine and I'll take bags of parts like this, uh, you know, and maybe clean 120 parts at one time. So this time I'm just going to do it on the bench. I put all the parts in here, everything you saw me take off except the faceplate. <laughs> and I'm going to, uh, oops, that might be kind of noisy, sorry.
just want to get enough in there to cover the parts up and then I'm, I'm just going to let them soak in there while I try and clean that lifting lever up, okay? You can see that water's turning grayish already. But we'll just let that do its thing for a while there. Okay. And then I, I sprayed a little bit of this just into a cup. I, wanna, I want to spot clean this uh, lifting lever. Get some of that muck off if, as, if I can. So I just put some of that cleaner in here and I'm going to use uh, brushes or uh, scrapers or q-tips or whatever to try and get in there. But I'm going to put this kitchen trash bag um, over the lava here so that I don't have to worry about dripping the cleaner onto that black finished finish and I don't know if it's called a lacquer maybe I mean, that's what it's called okay so I don't know maybe let me just get a q-tip here and we'll start trying to get some cleaner on there let it start going to work I have some little uh, artist paint brushes that I could do this too. And I kind of plan on cleaning the whole inside of the nose with this cleaner. Um, if you've seen any of my other cleaning videos, you know, I take a lot of parts off and I pre treat it and I'll take it right into the shower and spray it with some more crud cutter and rinse it off in the shower and blow it dry with a leaf blower or hair dryer <laughs> and uh, but this I don't know about doing that with this machine so I might just be cleaning the whole nose not right now but uh, you know trying to clean it up like this what we call spot clean and it looks like I'm, I'm getting a lot of that stuff off here just with using a Q-tip without any scrubbing or brushing into the area. Let me get around behind it. Pretty mucky black stuff. Let's see if I do have some kind of a toothbrush or something I can get in here. But... Uh, I, I came across this crud cutter accidentally one day at Home Depot when what caught my eye was degreaser. I was like, hey. And back then it was like $10 a gallon, so I said, I'm going to buy some of this. <laughs> and I uh, read the directions and started uh, using it, and I was like, wow. I just love it. So that's when I developed my give the machine a shower <laughs> method after spending uh, you know a couple days with rags and q-tips and all that stuff uh, trying to get a machine clean I just started taking the parts off and cleaning them and then cleaning the whole machine so it's worked well for me now here I'm I'm worried about getting on this black finish because I just have the feeling it would eat it up so I think I'm going to maybe quit while I'm a little bit ahead here and uh, take one of my old oil rags and mop it up here. Uh, some of the uh, featherweights I have seen pictures of are just incredibly pristine and beautiful, you know. And uh, you sure don't want to do anything to hurt that. So if you do use a cleaner like this, you must, I'm sure, protect the finish. 
I'll test it on the bottom side of the bed extension or something and we'll see what happens but I just am pretty sure it's going to eat that lacquer or whatever at the very least at the very least uh, it seems like it would dull it badly so I just don't think it's worth it for that but to get parts clean wow I just haven't found anything much better I don't know if I can get this in here a little more you can see the drippings down here what dripped off let's see if this shows up to be any more clean in here yeah it looks better let me show you up here in the nose looks better up here mm -hmm. I think what I'll do whoop, you see it up up there the black is gone I think what I'll do is uh, grab one of these uh, brushes like a little detail brush and I brought some plain tap water here too so I'll just uh, make sure I rinse all that cleaning agent off because I mean if it mixes with oil later and the oil runs out and gets on the paint I, I just like I said I'm just worried what that would do so I'll just get some water and rinse that off well okay and then um, I guess while I'm up here I have some brushes where, where are they here I, oh look at that I forgot I, I didn't put my spring in there my wow that's okay we can we can add it and then we'll we'll check and see how our parts are doing in here Ooh. Huh. looks like it's getting a lot of stuff off huh okay so now we'll add the the spring to that and uh, these detail brushes I think I I bought them uh, I don't know there was like 10 or 12 of them for five or six bucks on eBay and uh, some of them are very light weight nylon and uh, some ones I bought earlier at the dollar store are a little stiffer you know but they're great for like I want to see if I can get down in here and clean that bushing for the for the pressure bar see that get in there and then I'm gonna get up here in the guess what I'll call the middle bushing <laughs> and uh, since the since the top of this is painted I'm very I'm very hesitant to get that cleaner in there so what I might what I might do then is take a different uh, cleaning brush and just put some water how's that I'll just get some water on another brush and and get it down in there to twist it around in the threads where we put that pressure adjusting thumb nut okay all right and then I'll get a little water on those bushings rinse off the crud cutter um, the, the solution I'm using the 80 percent water anyway so now I'll start drying up all this water and cleaner mm -hmm. I see some of the water and cleaner ran over here to the needle bar so it's starting to clean the needle bar <laughs> I can 
rotate the machine. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, make sure I get this dry because I don't want it dripping on the paint. Okay, so I'm going to put my cleaner out of the way and my nasty Q-tips that got all that stuff off. I'm going to mop up the cleaner from my plastic here. I can move Lala back out of the way. Okay. And then uh, let's get this here and I'll get my water to rinse the parts and let's let's start taking a look at some of these parts. I'll leave the the spring and the push rod in there a while, but let's see if I can fish out the presser bar itself for now. Okay, so it's gotten a lot of stuff off and it'll we'll get down in here too with one of these detail brushes. I'll show you how deep that is. You know, you think the presser bar is, is solid steel, but look, it's hollow all the way down to about a half inch from the end connector there. <laughs> So, and you can put a little oil in there once in a while for that spring, especially if every time you lift the presser bar you hear <coughs> like that. <laughs> but uh, we'll clean this out here and let me just polish off one end just to see how clean it got here. See if we need something else on it. You don't want to use anything real abrasive on it. Um, pretty good. It's got a lot of that off. There's a little bit of muck left. So I think what I'll do is just uh, spray a little bit on this old beat up uh, kitchen type sponge. You know, a little scrubby sponge you have around the kitchen. And I'll just get a little of the cleaner on there and scrub it around. And now I have taken metal polish to these afterwards. You know, if I'm really doing a showcase restoration. But mostly you just want to get all the old dried up oil and gunk off of there. Okay. I'm going to rinse it in the water good. And you'll see some discoloration is down here still. You see that? Staining like onto the metal below, well, probably where it was sitting in the bushing there for a long time. So if you, if you want, you can take uh, a metal polish and put on there and polish that up to get all that off if you'd like to. I can do that here in a minute maybe just to show you. Let's, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to clean uh, the other parts here. I think you get the, the idea, right? So I'm going to just bring those out and if they have grungy stuff on them still, I'll use the sponge or you know, a, a, a toothbrush, but they've been sitting in here like 15 minutes, so they, they're going to be pretty clean, and I should just be able to take a look at them quickly and uh, rinse them off with the water and so forth, okay? No, no reason for you to watch me do that unless you're really bored at home with staying home for the virus. <laughs> Well, this is getting a lot cleaner already. See that push pin? And the, the, the spring is kind of a black spring anyway. 
So, I'll be back. Okay. I might clean that one with my sponge, but I'll, I'll show you what what's left in the bag there. But uh, you can see why a lot of times I just take these to the sink, you know, and, and spray them down like in the kitchen sink and scrub anything or brush anything I have to and rinse them off with the little s spray hose. See how that came off of the... Uh, thumb screw there uh-huh it's all that muck built up in there over the years mm -hmm. it does a pretty good job of getting getting rid of it all I suppose that there's uh, gonna be some here in the tip the tip only goes in a, a little way it doesn't really it's not deep it's just to hold that pin in there yeah not too bad cleans up chrome like beautiful okay um, there's the guide bracket and uh, where's my other brush I think I'll I'll go ahead and I'll just give that a little squirt of the stuff and be sure that that's cleaned out inside okay good so I'll just rinse these as I said a little bit slower process here I didn't think about that for doing the video when you're you're kind of cleaning them here on the bench so it's a good case for doing it in a sink or a utility sink or a work tub or something where you got a little more space and like that let's see this is uh, one of the first polishes I ever bought it's peak P double -E -K, um, out of the United Kingdom and I, I saw it on a video someplace about the lady had used it to polish the chrome on on a older black singer that she had and I thought wow that's nice so I, I got that I usually just use Brasso to be honest because it costs about six bucks and it seems to do just as good a job as anything else I've tried moss and fleet and all, all kinds but I'll put it on here and uh, it does a pretty it does a pretty good job oh, no worries they're they're like the metal polish to the Queen or something or the royal family you know in the United Kingdom so <laughs> but don't be surprised on these very old needle bars and stuff that it won't polish up every little bit of dark color and staining that's on there so don't don't be disappointed if you can't get it all off you can get a lot of black carbon looking stuff off of there and of course some of these are so old you know you don't want to take the chrome off whatever chrome is left or whatever polishing is left on here this is just polished steel, you know. But uh, then, of course, I'm going to rinse this again. But it it cleans it up a little bit. But um, and and the same thing on this. But look at the chrome pieces. The card cutter just has them beautifully shiny and clean you know and you can polish them with with this polish if you if you care to I've done that too to what we call I call brighten up the corners on a machine you know get that on there and just uh, usually rub it like on a t-shirt back and forth do about a hundred strokes or so and 
get a nice a lot of the little tiny feather scratches you know the little normal little wear scratches off of there and brighten up chrome very well mm -hmm. okay so I, th I think you got the idea <laughs> how I clean it so uh, oh I wanted to show you this here is the uh, residue that came off of just those parts you see my videos where I take a machine in the shower <laughs> And uh, you'll see at the bottom of the bucket, I'll have about a foot of water that looks like this or darker. But that is the muck that came off of just those parts. You know, to show you what's built up on these machines over the decades. And that's why I started cleaning them the way that I do. Okay, I'll get set back up here now and we'll put my little clean parts back on to Lala uh, which is pretty much the reverse of how I took them off and then we'll set this uh, height and for those of you that are bored and way ahead of me the height is about 5 16th of an inch from the bottom of the presser foot to the top of the needle plate and be sure that the feed dog is lowered so you're not measuring it from there five sixteenths of one inch is the lifting height all right all clean and pretty aren't they I had to uh, recharge the camera battery anyway so I went ahead and since I had put some of that metal polish on here I just kept polishing the uh, neat the presser bar for a while and uh, got all those uh, stains out came out very nice and uh, polished up the pin a little bit so you can see a lot more of the I guess it's kind of a carbonization or something came off all the steel there and uh, the parts look nice pretty so I want to start putting them uh, back together here. I'm just going to put a little oil in uh, this dish here. And I'm going to put a drop of oil where that uh, screw goes in. And I think I'll put a drop of oil on the clamping screw for the presser bar to put it back in there and I want I think I'm gonna go ahead and start that in there so it'll be ready I don't want to put it in far enough that it blocks the presser bar sliding through this guide bracket alright finally so I think that's exactly where I will start. There we go. Just to get that started. Then I'll just take a little finger wipe of oil on this bar and start it right back down in here. Line up that guide bracket with it uh -huh. so we're kind of back where that where we where we started right <laughs> it gets to that point and it wants to stick so I'm gonna just stick a cabinet screwdriver down in there a little bit and see if I can twist it a little and get it in there there we go easy enough huh Mm hmm very tight clearance so even though these are clean and oiled look at that the very very tight clearance so that's why it's a good idea to kind of clean the bar before you try and pull it up so I'm going to get a little oil on this uh, spring now 
By the way, when I clean these parts with crud cutter, I, I usually dry them with a hair dryer. But if you get a little bit of flash rust, this is the product I like to use, the must for rust. Uh, and it's a crud cutter product also made by uh, Rust-Oleum. doesn't take much and you can just use a little brush or rag or a Q-tip and put it on any little rust spots and it'll take care of them right away usually. So I'm going to drop this back down inside my presser bar. Okay, that looks good. And I am going to put one drop of oil on that pin and let it kind of run down inside the presser bar just so there's a little oil in in there for that spring. Don't have to do that very often at all. Then I'll put my pressure adjusting thumb nut back there. I'm just going to take a little brush here and I oh you can't see that can you huh? put a few drops of this this is a uh, pretty beat up but it's tri flow tri flow superior lubricant is the oil we use and then just get some oil on those threads and a little bit up there for the top of the pin and then I'm going to screw that on just just to kind of yep got to lower this down a little just just to get the thread started when we're going to set the height then you know we want a little bit whoops okay I thought I was even going to have trouble with that <laughs> We want a little bit of pressure on the presser bar to uh, facilitate when we set the height. Okay, so I haven't tightened the clamping screw yet. Um, now you would slide this thread cutter back on if you want to use it. Okay, and, and uh, let me see which side is yeah just just the circle of it would face you as you put it on the presser bar with this little triangle cutter to to the back side somewhere and this little curve towards the hand wheel and you can slide it on and when it when it gets up there if you have trouble getting it on I use this like a little screwdriver to help uh, push it back on and uh, if it doesn't get on at the angle that you want it's okay once you're on the presser bar you you can put your finger back there and you can kind of turn it the way you want so if you want to put it on with the triangle facing you and use that little screwdriver to get it pushed up on there depends uh, yours may be loose enough that it just wants to you know go right on there but you can kind of feel which edge is sharp of the front of that little triangle like I said I'm, I'm not going to put it on I won't be using that now I'll put my uh, um, thumb screw back on for the presser foot and I'll get the presser foot back on there. Oop. And I think I'm going to leave that uh, tension pin releasing lever off for now because it's so easy to put right on the front of this model that it might give us a little bit better view for putting the 
there we go so everything's nice and loose and ready to be adjusted right mm -hmm. you put a little bit more pr pr pressure you need a little bit of pressure to get this up when you're going to set the height so i'll put this just in my little oil tray for now so i don't lose it little magnetic dishes and then we're going to set the height of the presser bar and not only do you set the height but you also have to be sure that your presser foot lines up with the feed dog okay so that's kind of a double thing there that we'll be doing when I get set up for that then we'll come back and finish this up okay let's go ahead and set the height and line up the presser bar and the presser foot um, one thing that we want to be sure of is that you turn the hand wheel towards you and rotate until the feed dog is below the needle plate when we take a measurement it needs to be from the top of the needle plate to the bottom of the presser foot so you don't want your feed dog sticking up and, and interfering with that measurement okay and Singer said that the height of that when when you lift the foot like this the height of it uh, should be five sixteenths of an inch okay five sixteenths of an inch in millimeters that's seven point nine three seven five millimeters just under eight millimeters so uh, in the past I've always used um, a combination of coins and feeler gauges to achieve that height. Uh, for us here in the United States, the quarter dollar is 1.75 millimeters thick. So putting uh, four of these together, you have a height of seven millimeters. Okay. This is kind of slipping around because I, I don't have it tightened here. Okay. And let's get this down a little bit there. I want that to stay up. I don't know if I need a little more pressure on the pressure bar. It's not wanting to stay up there. I might have to put this uh, might have to put this tension releasing tension pin releasing lever back in now that I think about it but let's go ahead and talk about the height for a minute um, because that will give you seven millimeters right and I'm gonna loosen the I'm going to loosen this a little bit so it's not so hard to push up and I think I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the hand wheel and get my needle bar up higher let's see it comes down the feed dog is down there now the feed dog is still below the needle plate gives me a little more room to work with so at seven millimeters to get my nine point nine three seven five I, I use a um, two of these feeler gauges in combination and um, they're see I don't know if that'll show in the light 0 0.018 inch and 0 0.019 inch which is 0.45 millimeter and 0.48 millimeter so that combination actually will give me very close to a 0.94 and the goal is 0.9375 so that's about the closest that I can come 
and I'm simply going to rest these on top of the quarters and under the presser foot I can get them up here <laughs> to get a total height there we go to get the total height I'm looking for okay now if you don't if you don't have a feeler gauge like that and you're in the US and, and you just want to put the four quarters and leave it at that that's going to give you a height of 7.0 so you'd be less than one millimeter away from the perfect height so in a pinch you could do that you know uh, for Singer's domestic machines that 5 sixteenths is one of the highest uh, settings for their for their uh, home sewing machines when I get this uh, set now what I want to do is make sure my pressure bar is up so that the mm, guide bracket is resting on it so that's going to be like the lift position is right there and I want to line up the foot with the feed dog or with the slots in the needle plate so that when I sew it will it will pull the fabric straight and not off to one side or the other and when I get that lined up I'm just going to tighten this clamping screw here if I can get in I might turn this a little and uh, that's going to hold the needle bar in that height or the presser bar <laughs> sorry Now, I'm not going to really bear down on this screw right now. I, I want to check everything first, you know, before I, before I do that. But uh, that's basically the idea of setting the height. Now, I'll pull these out, and we'll see how I did. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good there. Let's go around here. And I want to see, yeah, see when I look here, I got this a little off because the quarters were over the slot. And I see that this, this is kind of going off to the right. The side of my presser foot is not lined up evenly with the slot opening for the feed dog. So I've got to correct that a little bit. So sometimes I can sneak in here and just barely loosen this turn my pressure way back so it's light and has hardly any pressure if at all and I can just loosen that a little bit so that I can twist my foot without changing the height mm -hmm. Now that looks much better. And you really you have to pay attention to that because if you don't, you're going to find it hard to sew a straight seam. <laughs> the the fabric, you know, the feed dog is going to be pulling straight front to back or back to front, but if the foot's crooked, your 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 fabric's going to sew off to the side. Let's try, let's try this now. Yeah, it's working good. Let me double check. It looks perfectly straight now, lined up. So I think I'm pretty good. I think I will go ahead and put this uh, lifter tension pin releasing lever back in here. Should go right in there like that. There you go. I was trying to, I was trying to, I was trying to put this side down too far because the pin is 
the tension unit is going to sit up here so the pin is going to come through right behind the hole for the for the set screw for the stud let's get this in here now and we'll test everything if you if you uh, you know if you if you live someplace where you don't have US quarter dollar coins you can look up all I did was look on Google and say US coin thickness and I got all kinds of references to charts of how th how thick every coin in our currency is you know so I think you could probably do that in most countries and got to kind of I couldn't make up any combination that was perfect to 7.9375 <laughs> and that's why I've always used the feeler gauge to get the last little distance you know and I I just bought these at the auto shop down the road I have a this smaller one and then later I got a bigger one Let's see if I got this okay not have it on that on the hinge part of the screw because it wasn't hinging very well it's easy to pinch the lever behind the head of the screw and not get it there now I think it's going to yeah so when you tighten the screw you got to be sure the lever is pulled back onto the hinge part just behind the head or you don't get this nice little rocking motion okay so let's tighten the pressure down to a more normal sewing pressure and see how we do okay it's up let's see how close I am or if I need to play around with that some more mm -hmm. I will say sometimes when you're dismantling this and you, you loosen this clamp screw and you take the presser bar out you'll actually see an indentation in the metal of the presser bar where somebody had tightened it so so hard you know that that point of the set screw kind of made a dot on there and sometimes I've been able to just put the bar in there until I could see that mark inside the hole and then put the set screw in and tighten it and then it was perfect so sometimes you get lucky so my seven uh, millimeter height coins went right back in there as they as they should so I'm just going to see now if I can slip my uh, feeler gauge 0.94 and have the same results yeah mm -hmm. I'm good with this I'm good with this because it should it should go when you lift uh, up and it holds it should be uh, up a little tiny bit if you've ever noticed that on a lot of Singer machines you're putting something thick and you just lift it up the next tiny bit and it goes up so I'm pretty pretty confident I got my 5 16 of an inch height and I'm going to verify that one more time with this tool that a viewer and friend Terry McLean sent me from Canada uh, he's been getting into restoring singers and watching my channel a little bit and we've communicated about a few things and he sent me this as a gift and and he did a uh, what's that called a 3d printer of this little tool and it's got the little steps of the different presser bar height settings and it's got the four most common that singer ever designated 
0 0.290, 0 0.295, 0 0.30, and 5 sixteenths. Probably hard to see them, but if you take your finger across, you can you can feel they just gradually step right up. So for somebody that does this a lot, I was like, wow, this this is really good. No more fooling around with the coins and everything, you know. But we'll see how close I got with this because I, there we go. And the nice thing with this is I can push it back. Yeah, I can push it back until this edge for the 5 16th is right along the slot. So it's very easy to see if I have the presser bar lined up. So, wow, that's going to make this easy. And then if I, if I was doing a machine that had the, uh, the point three zero zero, I could still line up this edge with something on the front of the machine, depending on the machine. So, you know, looking at it, because he printed this perfectly uh, in a rectangle shape, you know, I can, I can get it kind of lined up with the next height ridge. Uh, maybe, I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about there. See, right there is a ridge line that's going from the 0.295 to the 0.30. It's a little edge. And if I get my foot lined up with that on the tool, I'm going to be good. So, Terry, this was a, this was a great gift. You know, what, what guy who does anything mechanical doesn't enjoy a, a tool, <laughs> you know? It's easy to justify spending money on tools, but to get one as a gift. And I know you 3D printed this. So, I don't know. Do you plan on do you plan on marketing these or anything? If you do, let me know. Um, maybe my viewers would be interested because it's just so much easier than using coins in a feeler gauge or you know, stacks of paper. You can you can find the measurement of like copy paper and stuff. So I, I'm also going to want to say if you feel like you're not height enough, you can loosen this uh, clamping screw. See how that dropped down? And you can get this back up. And tighten it back up. So once you know that the what the height is and how this system works, it's not it's not hard to adjust. And you want it pretty close to the factory setting for the model because all the all the accessories, not only the presser feet, but like if you put the, the button holder on here or the uh, zigzag attachment, they're all made for that height, you know. And uh, if you're going to be off, you think you're going to be off a little bit, I'd be a, just uh, tempted to go a tiny bit, what, too low. Because if you're up too high, you may have trouble getting good contact between the presser foot and the feed dog, you know. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how how many viewers. What would you pay for a little tool like this? It's pretty cool. I I like it. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Terry. <laughs> so I am going to put a drop above this bushing and above this bushing down here. And uh, you just need a drop. You don't need to get carried away. If this machine was in use and I was just doing a, you know, semi-monthly oiling or weekly oiling, I would take a rag and I would try and wipe up as much of the old oil out of here with a rag, a Q-tip, a brush to avoid build up. I'll put one drop of oil there and one there and I'll just get it going up and down. 
A lot of times when you oil the whole machine, you can just go ahead and run it, uh, you know, for a few minutes and let all that oil get uh, in the machine. And then uh, I come back and I wipe up any drips or excess because it's just going to collect lint and dust and dirt and, and make the machine crummy in there again. Wow. Those parts cleaned up nice, didn't they? Okay. Thanks for tuning in on that. Hope you'll come back and join me for uh, the, the future videos for Lala, the $50 featherweight. <laughs> I have good hopes that it's going to sew just fine when I'm all done. See you then. Take care.